Hello, I'm Carrie Owens and I am with Butler County Adult Protective Services. And I'm Kevin Kropesky. I'm the supervisor at uh, Adult Protective Services for Butler County. And we're here to talk about our program and what we do in, in the county and the clients that we serve. So uh, it's myself and five uh, field workers that work here at Adult Protective Services. Um, we're under Job and Family Services, and we are stationed at the Children's Services uh, Building for ease of home visits and uh, supervisory support for the protective services that we do that aligns uh, to a great great extent with Children's Services and their, their mission. Uh, the Children's Services screeners who take the calls for uh, Children's Services are the same ones that take the majority of our uh, adult protective services calls. And um, so... Uh, I'm going to share my screen here, and we have a presentation put together. So Adult Protective Services, basically we're working with vulnerable seniors, uh, age 60 and over. Um, some reports that we get, the uh, senior has support already from uh, family, uh, community services, and so forth, and they're able to navigate the issues that they're dealing with. So um, this mission statement from our National Adult Protective Services Administrators uh, basically alludes to that, that um, sometimes Adult Protective Services is not needed because of the supports that the person already has, but we're here as a safety net for those that don't have enough assistance to navigate their problems of, of maltreatment and so forth. The categories of allegations that we receive are uh, abuse, neglect, and exploitation. There's also a subset of self-neglect, so folks that have uh, become unable to take care of their own uh, immediate needs over time, and um, that's actually the most common uh, allegation that we deal with, followed probably by exploitation. Uh, we see more and more exploitation and scams in recent years. Um, as far as when to call, you don't have to have definitive proof of maltreatment. It's reasonable cause is the wording in the law. Um, if you reason, have reasonable cause to believe that a person is abused, neglected, or exploited, or is unable to take care of the, their own needs um, or self-neglect, um, you um, are mandated by law uh, to call uh, Adult Protective Services. Uh, the professionals that are mandated, it's a long list, but uh, most of the... Um, uh, workers that uh, work in case management are going to fall into that category. Um, and our age is 60 and over, and they need to be in the community. Um, so um, any type of residence in the community in Butler County, um, Adult Protective Services does also exist in every other county in Ohio, most if not all other states so you can also report to adult protective services and other other areas next i'm going to go over some of the aps principles just to give you an idea of the framework that we follow on our case approach so aps adult protective services clients have the right to be safe and but they also have the right to accept or refuse our services so if we don't have any major concern about their uh, ability to understand the situation or the risks associated with their choices, they do have a right to refuse. Um, they have a right to make decisions that do not conform with societal norms. Um, and of course, we want to take into account their civil rights. They still have their rights, even if they fit the age criteria to be reported to us. And then most importantly, um, the right to confidentiality. We're very limited in what we can share with outside sources. Um, we will put the client first. We want to involve them as much as possible in the case planning and going over what uh, resources we would suggest that pertain to their situation and give them options to choose from. Uh, we also avoid imposing our personal beliefs on them. Um, we will, you know, talk to them and um, try to help them weigh the pros and cons to their situation and what choices that they have. Um, again, just stressing that we involve the adult as much as absolutely possible. Um, many, as in many agencies, we, you know, seek to get releases of information and their uh, authorization to talk to outside sources. We do want to consider the least restrictive as, uh, options for them. Uh, we want to still promote their independence and um, try to do what we can 
to allow them to remain at home in the community. And of course, we do not want to do more harm. Sometimes our presence alone can be very traumatic, um, but we, and we do consider the information and reports um, on how we approach that case investigation. You know, if there's dangers in the home, if our showing up is going to possibly trigger retaliation, we try to take that in consideration and come up with an approach that will keep that adult as safe as possible. So some of the common things that we're doing with the clients that we work with, we're facilitating services. So uh, our unit is very small. We can only cover so much ground. We rely a lot on referrals to other partner agencies. Uh, Council on Aging is one of the main uh, partners that we have, uh, services like Meals on Wheels on the screen. Um, we can also serve as a communication link. So uh, when clients have issues involving potentially police, uh, their physicians, um, you know, mental health services, courts, uh, other service providers, family that maybe is, doesn't understand the issues that their uh, loved one is going through, APS is helping to communicate with all those different entities and, and try to get people on the same page. One thing that we do is we, again, to emphasize the communication with families um, and trying to get responsible, capable, interested family members back involved in the person's life. Uh, they may not realize how much assistance their parent or loved one needs, and we can help to communicate to them the, the uh, necessity of the support that they can potentially provide. Um, as a last resort, in some instances, if the only if the client is considered either incompetent or incapacitated, um, we need physician or medical, psych, uh, psychological, psych, psychologist support uh, in that type of uh, intervention, uh, we can seek uh, orders through the probate court. Uh, we partner with Lifespan and their guardianship program, so they handle a lot of um, our cases and become the long-term guardian for the client. We also have options through the prosecutor's office to seek court orders for placement or court-ordered services for clients, again, if they're incapacitated and if other criteria are met um, with the severity of the situation. Now I'm going to go over some information on what is good or a helpful report to us. Um, so number one is identifying the information that points to that maltreatment of abuse, neglect, or exploitation, um, or self-neglect, including, you know, very specifics, time frames. When did it happen? If it's abuse, you know, detailing injuries, if it's verbal abuse, you know, what kinds of things are being said or done to make that adult um, potentially a victim of abuse. Um, then the other thing would be identifying any impairments that person has. So why is that person unable to advocate for themselves? Is it physical infirmities? Is it mental? Is it both? Um, if you've got information about their medical history, um, lack of support system, those kinds of things help us determine if our need, um, if the need for adult protective services is legitimate. Um, and so some reasons we may not open a case, uh, your concern may be very valid, but it may be too mild. That person may, um, there may be a concern, but it's not truly abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Uh, the adult may already have somebody in place that can assist them. If, that per if the client can't advocate for themselves, they may have a good, trustworthy family member in place, power of attorney, a guardian. Um, the other common reason we don't open is people make reports for um, adults that are residing in a care facility. There's another agency, it's Pro Seniors Ombudsman, who investigates concerns for anybody in like an assisted living or nursing home setting. So the options to call when you do want to, or need to make a report to Adult Protective Services here in Butler County, um, the easiest or most common option is to call the intake line 887-4081. Uh, the state does have a uh, 800 number uh, on the screen where you can call and you can get patched into any county in Ohio. Um, there's an option to choose the county and then you get directed there to their intake number. Um, you can fax reports if you had paperwork or a written report that you wanted to share. 
you can email myself. The My email address is there. And then the state also has developed an online reporting system um, where you can uh, set up a login. And if you're in the habit of making, you know, frequent Adult Protective Services reports, that might be something that you consider. So otherwise, that's all that we have today. Thank you for providing services to your clients in the community. And we look forward to uh, partnering with you in the future. Thank you.